This is the Irish Roof on America. Five points, Ivola. And what time is it? Time for my new campaign in Adventure Time. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stay tuned. Look out! Quick, get it back up! Hurry! You want cartoons? We got cartoons! www.ivestream.com slash five points I roll up. Live TV radio show 12 a.m. to 1 p.m. Fridays. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, that's what's going on. That's my new ad campaign. Maybe I'll add some clips to it, but I like it. It's good. Now, unfortunately, last session, as previously stated, we experienced some, what would you call them, technical difficulties. And you cannot hear the intro or even the Google toilet thing. So, right now, we're going to play the Pokemon for you once more. So you finally get to hear it. Here we go. Never using YouTube again. Okay, so once again, that was Pokemon. Charizard, Mega Charizard, Charizard evolves. There's not one, but two evolutions of Mewtwo. And sadly, no word yet on a Mega Mew. So, no word yet on a Mega Mew. Anyway, 
let's get back to what's going on in the world right now. I mean, there's this whole thing. I'm going to play this clip with Obama, and he's talking about the government shutdown. And honestly, you pretty much should get your homework done before September 30th. Why? Well, what's the point of doing your homework after the government shuts down? I mean, honestly. Okay. So let's get on with this. Now, I've been kind of busy. They're doing a lot of things. Doing a lot of things. Okay, and uh, unfortunately, that means I've been having to, like, balance some things out. I have to go to some meetings so I participate and know what's going on. And uh, unfortunately, Cross Country has been suffering. And I'm just about ready to get kicked off the team. So I'm, tr I'm going to practice today. I'm trying my best. I'm trying to give it my all. But hopefully this Hercules clip will help me get through it. Screen, expand, play low. Gonna do this. Gonna do cross country. I gotta do this. Gotta do this, man. Ready to go to some sides. Once the government shuts down, I'm pretty much going to need to run as much as I possibly can. So I got to get the experience. The government's shutting down. That was my radio advertisement. That I don't need it anymore. Maybe I'll play it later. Okay. Google. What's going on with Google? Because last time, there's this whole thing with Google that you didn't get to see. I'm going to save that a little bit longer. And finally, I'm going to talk about the Big Bang Theory. That's right. I saw it. And not only that, I got a recording. And somebody's waving outside. Hold on one second. See? See the person out there? Hi. Right. Okay. Back to the radio show. Okay. This is the Big Bang Theory. Bazinga. i finally talking about it on my radio show. Let's go. Where's the play button? Where's the play button? Um, okay. I don't know how to exit now. Bang. No! This is so confusing. Oh, here it is. Okay. Play! 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 I learned something new today. You can't play DVDs and record it, you know? Just doesn't work that way. But yes, Sheldon, he talked about YouTube. YouTube! He is disapproving YouTube with all the channel changes. It got five stars and now it's a like. Now, there's no more friends on YouTube. Seriously, do you have a friend on YouTube? No, They're, you're lucky if you can call him a contact. It's all subscribers. Sheldon does not approve of YouTube, and to blame, I'd say Google. Google with all their nonsense and their hierarchical. I mean, Google is supposed to be your friend. Google helps you out. It's making the search easier. But right now, I got another article for you about this. Is Google making you stupid? 
This is a thing I found in one of my classes, Communication New Media. And let me just read this aloud. What the internet is doing to our brains. This is by Nicholas Carr, as you can clearly see right here. Dave, stop, stop, will you? Stop, Dave. Will you stop, Dave? So the supercomputer Hal pleads with the implacable astronaut Dave Bowman in a famous and really poignant scene toward the end of Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. Bowman, having nearly been sent to a deep space debt by the malfunctioning machine, is calmly, coldly disconnecting the memory circuits that control its artificial brain. Dave, my mind is going. Hal says, forlornly. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it too. Over the past few years, I have had an uncomfortable sense that someone or something has been tinkering with my brain, remapping my neural circuitry, reprogramming the memory. My mind isn't going, so as far as I can tell, but it's changing. I'm not thinking the way I used to think. I can feel most strongly when I'm reading. Immersely myself into a book or a lengthy article used to be easy. My mind would get caught up in the narrative or deterrence of the argument, and I'd spend hours trolling through long stretches of prose. That's really the case anymore. Now my concentration often starts to drift after two or three pages. I get fidgety, lose the tread, begin looking for something else to do. I feel as if I'm always dragging my wayward brain to the text. The deep reading that used to come naturally has become a struggle. I think I know what's going on. For more than a decade now, I've been spending a lot of time online, searching and surfing, sometimes adding to the great databases of the internet. The web had been a godsend to me as a writer. Research that once required days and lacks of the periodic norms of libraries can now be done in minutes. A few Google searches, some quick clicks on hyperlinks, and I've got the telltale fact or pity quotes I was after. Even when I'm not working, I'm as likely as not to be foraging in the web's information readings, in writing emails, scanning headlines and blog posts, watching videos and listening to podcasts, or just tripping from link to link. For me, as for others, the net's becoming a universal medium to conduct for most of the information that flows to my eyes and ears and into my mind. The advantages of having immediate access to such an incredibly rich source of information are many, and they've been widely described and duly applied. The perfect recall of silicon memory. Okay, I'm tired of reading this. This shows how Google, how, how we're reading online is affecting our brains and why my dad always thinks I'm a zombie. That's right, my dad sometimes thinks I'm a zombie, I'm an idiot. I forget to bring the laundry upstairs. I'm like, what's wrong with you, you zombie? So yeah, it, you can blame too much TV and internet for that. It's reprogramming our brains, man. They actually are turning us into zombies. All right, back to Google. Back to Google. The most interesting video, funniest video on Google I've ever seen. This is the Google toilet. I played it last last week, but you didn't hear it. All you did was saw some really weird things. So here we go. I will cut it out early because of you know something. How'd you know that I liked Indian food? Oh yeah. Google. We know what you're searching for. You do? Well, look, look, well, this isn't what it looks like. We know what you're writing in your emails. What? No, this is private stuff here! Hey, Dad, I need to borrow some money for, uh, you know, medicine and, uh... And with Google Voice, uh, we now know every word you say to your friends and family. What? Seriously? Why? So we can serve advertisements specifically targeted to your lifestyle. Oh, uh, I am so not comfortable with anyone knowing this. Now we're taking it to the next level with... The Google Toilet. Oh, no. You gotta be kidding me. Our data mining technology can literally sift through your shit to deliver the ultimate targeted ads. Indian food? How'd you know that I like Indian food? Oh, yeah. And it automatically updates your Facebook page with your toxicology report. Are you nuts? I don't want anyone to know that! What's going on here? Too bad. Hey. Now all your crap is cataloged uh, information that can be bought back. and sold. Information? Nah. This is my life. My private life. Hey, you registered for a free toilet, pal. Now take another shit so I can tell you where to shop. No, this is out of control. How can I trust you with so much power? Relax. We're just Google. What's the worst that could happen? Daryl Nash at 14 Brooks Avenue. The United States government is not cool with the way you're living your life. You, sir, are a freak. There's something 
doesn't smell right about this guy. What are we waiting for? Let's take this guy to Gitmo. Uh, sorry, dude. They Googled you. Nothing I could do to stop him. But what happened to our privacy? What happened to the Bill of Rights? Huh? What happened to... All right, that's as far as I can go. Now, let me say, let me talk what's going on here now. Now, this is going to be our day. I'm doing this paper for my social psychology, you know, thing. We have no guidelines, no questions to answer. I have no idea what to do. So I figure, all right, I'll do a project, a paper on how social learning affects conduct disorder because that was kind of my ding this semester. So I go to the library because I'm hearing these things about how Internet changes our minds. I'm going to actually try and get an actual book from the library to read, you know, to, to do some thinking, to do some actual research, not these articles that give you, like, pretty good information, but then you're not really doing any work. So here's what happened to me. I go, I go to the library, I check out this book called Social Learning Theory by Albert Bandura. It's a legit book. So I have it, I have it right here. Wait, I did have it right here. Oh, so anyway. Here is what happened. On page six, to many people implies a one-way control process which reduces individuals to passive respondents to the vagaries of whatever implements is impinged upon them. Popular accounts of the potentials of the psychological control conjure up frightening images of societies in which inhabitants are manipulated at will by occult technocrats. Huh. I would find a book like this. Uh, okay, that's enough of that. Google, you have to read more. You're going to become a zombie or something. Anybody see South Park? Hold on, I can't find the... Okay, no, go, go back. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Okay, clearly I have no idea what I'm doing here. It's not to be seen, not to be found. I can't get back. Sorry, South Park. I can't. I can't do it. South Park had this really awesome thing about the government watching us, and I can't find it. Where? Where am I now? Menu. Yeah, here we go. Now um, I'm gonna have to pause it because there was actually some foul language. The first episode of South Park, it was really, really funny because I'm. I can't do anything bad on this radio show. And all they do at the first is just do non-stop cursing in the first episode. So yeah. The first, like at the beginning, right when it started. It was hysterical. And of course you can't see this, I apologize, I just learned about this today. But you can still hear this. Alright, so Kyle's like, Carmen's about the government and stuff. Here we go. Cartman's praying to the government. I mean, uh, Butters. Butters is praying to the government. It's hysterical. Against all, I perish like the little girl with blood in the fire. Well, you shouldn't be handing out drawings like this, 
man. Well, don't you know that the government is watching you? The government is watching me? Why is that? Isn't the government watching me? I know. How long have they been watching me? Can I ask you something? When was the last time you went to your local DMV? I don't go to DMV. I go to one car. Oh, you can walk. Trust me. You've got to go to the DMV. It's incredible. See, I was like you. Afraid. I'm sure. Doing stuff I shouldn't do, like showing people pictures of little girls with their heads on fire. But you know what I've learned? That just going to the DMV and letting go of all my wrongdoings filled me with a joy I felt nowhere else. Would you like to read some DMV literature? This will tell you most of what you need to know about the DMV. But just go. Everyone there is really nice. Your government is watching you, and your government wants you to be happy. Have a nice day. Okay, so basically, Butters just converts some Jehovah's Witnesses to DMV. That's his thing where he, he's going to confession to confess his sins at the DMV. You know, the place where there's all these horrible lines. It just keeps getting funnier and funnier in that episode, honestly. And I can't spoil the rest of it for you because, and then there's some like bad language. So that's all I can show you for South Park. All I can show you for South Park. Okay, uh, so I talked about some stuff, talked about South Park, talked about, uh, oh, finally, Obama. This is what all of you guys want to hear. You want to hear my opinions on Obama and this government thing, and, uh, well, let me just say, I have to play this clip first. It's 10 minutes. This is Obama. This is our president of the United States, so we got to listen to him. And basically, I have no idea what to do after this point. Full screen. Play. trying to scare everybody 
with lies about death panels, killing Granny. Right? I mean, that's Armageddon. So if it actually works, they'll look pretty bad. If it actually works, that will mean that everything they were saying really wasn't true when they were just playing politics. Just the other day, one Republican in Congress said, we need to shut this thing down before the marketplace is open uh, and people get to see uh, that they'll be getting coverage and, and getting these subsidies because, and, and, and I'm going to quote him here, he said, it's going to prove almost impossible to undo Obamacare. Right? So, so in other words, we've got to shut this thing down before people find out that they like it. That's a strange argument. Don't you think that's a strange argument? And the closer we get, the more desperate they get. I mean, over the last few weeks, the, the rhetoric has just been cranked up to a place I've never seen before. One congressman said that Obamacare is the most dangerous piece of legislation ever passed. <laughs> ever in the history of America, this is the most dangerous piece of legislation. Providing, providing <laughs> creating, creating a marketplace so people can buy group insurance plans, the most dangerous ever. Uh, you, you had a state representative somewhere say that uh, it's as destructive to personal and individual liberty as the Fugitive Slave Act. <laughs> Think about that. Affordable health care is worse than a law that lets slave owners get their runaway slaves back. I'm not making this stuff up. Uh, and and, and, and here's, here's one more that I've heard. I like this one. Uh, we have to, and I'm, I'm quoting here, we have to repeal this failure before it literally kills women, kills children, kills senior citizens. Now, I have to say that one was from six months ago. I just want to point out, we still have women, we still have children, we still have senior citizens. Oh, hold on, we got an incoming caller. Jill up. Hello, I'd like to speak to the Walt House, please. This is he. Walt House. A Turner Classic Pictures. The cable television channel, which shows classic movies, they've been showing 